dear students today we will be discussing about various components of a grid connected PV system and its design steps. So, if we see the basic flow diagram of a grid connected PV system it looks something like this. So, solar radiation is falling on the PV array and then in order to convert this DC current which is generated in the PV system will be converted to alternating current by using an inverter. And then from inverter we can connect to a household electricity which is load. And then we can see the amount of power generated and we can provide the energy to the utility grid. So, this is a very basic flow diagram of a grid connected PV system which comprises of PV modules, inverter, load, then net meter, then we have grid utility. And the energy from grid can also be utilized when there is no sunshine that means at night time. So, that is how this meter is known as net meter. It take care of the amount of energy which is generated here and given to the grid and from grid how much energy is taken. So, finally, the net energy consumed or net energy which is required for running the system can be evaluated. So, at the end it might show happen that the amount of energy we have given to the grid is more than the amount of energy we are getting from the grid. So, that way we can earn money as well. So, there are two general types of electrical designs for PV systems. First one is without battery backup and second one is with battery storage. So, here we have PV array and then we have MPPT inverter and grid interface will be there and this will be connected to controller protection interface. And we can use it locally that is how it is called local grid and also we can given to utility grid. For the second issues with battery storage we will have additional battery bank. So, all the components will be there MPPT, source controller, inverter, grid interface and this has to be connected with uh, controller protection interface and uh, we can use it for local grid as well as utility grid. Only basic difference is in the first case no battery is used that means no energy storage device is employed in the second case energy storage device is employed. And this is the layout of a grid connected PV system. We will have sun, then arrays, then we will have inverter. It may be central inverter or may be string inverters. And then we need cables to transfer energy from array to the inverter and then from inverter to the transformer and then transformer to the grid right. So, here we use DC cables from array to the inverter and from inverter to the transformer we use AC cable and it is low tension cable and from transformer to grid it is a high tension cable. That means, at high voltage at low current it is transmitted and here in low tension line we will have high current and low voltage will flow through the cable. And these cables are not 100 percent efficient. So, we need to consider some losses as well when we are calculating the system performance and also the inverter. So, it is not 100 percent, but our attempt is to get very close power output from the inverter. Okay. So, this is the layout of a grid connected PV system. 
So, while designing we need to design all the components like inverters, then modules the kind of modules, the modules to be connected in series and parallel, type of cables, what kind of cables, what standards to be used for AC and DC cables. So, all the components need to be considered while designing a grid connected PV system. So, if we talk about components, so these are classified into three primary categories electrical, civil and mechanical components and then power monitoring components. Under electrical components we will have PV modules, power conditioning units, cables, combiner box, connectors and civil and mechanical components will have module mounting and structures, mounting foundations we need to build the foundation to hold the structure, scatter system is required and then weather monitoring stations. So, these all components are required for a solar PV power plant. So, let us see the kind of inverter we can use in different applications. So, there are different kind of inverters like module inverter, string inverters, then multi string inverters, then central inverters. Mostly if the capacity of installation is large, then we will go for central inverters. Otherwise, we can select based on the ranges we are planned for. So, if the power range is 100 to 300 watt, then we will go for module inverter and if it is 700 to 1200 watt, we go for string inverters and if our requirement is 2000 to about uh, 17 kilowatt, then we will go for multi string inverters and if our requirement is 30 kilowatt to megawatt level, then we will go for central inverters. And there are comparisons like the number of MPPT is used, whether it is used or not. So, for module inverters, they do not use MPPT, string inverters they have used MPPTs, but in multi string they use multiple MPPTs and central inverters again they use multiple MPPTs. Also you can see the output, it may be single and three phase output and if you see the efficiencies, so for a module inverter its efficiency ranges from 95 to 96 percent. But for other cases, if you see the multi string inverters and the central inverters, its efficiency is very, very high. So, while designing a solar power plant, our attempt is to maximize this efficiency because it takes care of the final conversion. Okay? And there are advantages and disadvantages as well if we talk about different inverters. So, we need to select the best inverters for the best applications looking into the appropriateness of the plant. And also we must know what is islanding. So, this phenomenon can be understood by giving one example. Say for example, we have solar plant here, different modules are connected in series and parallel. So, this is a plant and we will have this is grid. Okay. So, this is say for example, this is line where this power is also coming and this power is also coming and then we are distributing okay, distribution. If something goes wrong in this system, in this conventional power grid, And if you are deploying one person to rectify the problem, he comes and try to do the rectifications. If he does not have any information about this plant, solar plant, then it will be a danger issue because current is flowing even though this is shut off, this current is flowing. So, it might so happen that this current can cause 
catastrophe to this person. So, this inverter should know or this facility must be with the inverter when there is a power cut this inverter should give some kind of signal to cut off the solar power plant. So, this is islanding and this is very very important while designing a solar power plant. Also we must know what is uh, mountings for grid connected PV system is made up of an array of panels mounted on metallic support or integrated in a building. So, it may be rooftop or it may be ground mounted right. So, there are advantages associated with rooftop as well as ground mounted, but there are disadvantages as well in both the cases. In case of roof mounted solar PV system, this roof mounts are less expensive because it uses existing roof structure as a foundation and here in this case less material is required and also labor cost is lower and utilizes unused spaces. This is one of the big advantages. What are disadvantages? It is hard to access and troubleshoot error. If something goes wrong here in the modules then it is very difficult to climb and again remove the modules and refix it. So, it is somewhat not so convenient. Space constraints on the roof limits the size of the plant. Even though we can go for a higher power plant, but we cannot go into it because of the size constraint or roof space available. Then the replacement of roof is difficult within the panel's lifetime. If something goes wrong, then it is very difficult to remove the rooftop and refix it. And once we have done the fixing, then there might be some water leakages issues in case of roof mounted solar PV system. In case of ground mounted solar system, it is very easy to access, easy to clean and easier to troubleshoot. But it has got some disadvantages like installation is more labor intensive and expensive. It requires more parts and pieces and not aesthetically pleasing to everyone. So, there are different situations where we need to use roof mounted solar power system and also ground mounted solar PV system. Also we need to know what is SCADA. SCADA is supervisory control and data equation and this is used to monitor data from a plethora of devices including meters, inverters, weather stations, then trackers, DC strings and substation equipments. Mostly we get the information about the health of the plant. On the top of it we get the lifetime power production in kilowatt hour, then record of daily power production, it may be monthly or may be annually and monthly saving, then amount of carbon dioxide reduction, then record of any system warning or faults, the current system power generation, then total everyday energy production, photovoltaic input voltage, then photovoltaic input current. So, all the informations we get in a single system, but we need to have separate unit to run the scatter system. That means, it will consume some kind of energy and also we need weather monitoring stations to monitor wind direction, wind speed, temperature, humidity, rainfall, solar radiation and barometric pressures. So, these informations are also required to know the condition of the plant and we can predict the efficiency of the plant. So, now 
we can move to the design of a grid connected solar PV system. So, it comprises of three primary components preliminary study is the first component, then design of the system is the second component, and performance analysis is the third component. So, what are the things included under preliminary design? It's design of the geographical settings. So, we must know the locations where this will be installed and what is the climatic condition and what kind of technology you can suggest for the particular locations and of course, the technologies. And second step is selection of components like modules, inverter, cables, combiner box and all other accessories. And then we have to go for design of array inverter matching which is very very crucial like we need to know the specifications of the inverter very precisely that includes the input voltage, input power and then current of the inverter that has to match with the array. So, we will discuss all those aspects in the coming slides and under design of the systems cable losses are also included and some kind of setting analysis. And when we are talking about performance analysis, we must device, we must devise a system which can give us the system energy production, then performance ratio and system losses. So, we must know how this can be performed because once we design it, the we need to find, uh, investigate the performance as well. So, how nicely the system will work. So, under preliminary study, what are things we need to monitor? We need to find out the solar access to the site and we need to determine whether any shedding will occur and estimate its effect on the system. And we need to determine the orientation and tilt angle of the roof, also available area for installation of solar arrays and also we need to check whether roof is suitable for mounting arrays in case of roof mounted system and how many modules are required and what capacity and where to install the inverters and how to make the wearings taking their cables. So, these all falls under the preliminary study of a design of a or installation of a grid connected PV system. Following this, the designer shall estimate the available solar irradiation for the array based on the available solar irradiation for the site, tilt, orientation and effect of any shadows. So, these are very very important aspect before plan for designing a solar power plant. Now, various parameters defining climatic condition of a particular location can be obtained from respective meteorological department. If that is not possible, then we can go for NASA meteorological department which is available online. So, from that also we can find out the data and these parameters are required monthly average daily normal radiation, monthly average insulation incident on horizontal surface, monthly average clear sky insulation, clearness index, monthly average daylight hours, daily sunshine hours, monthly average wind speed, monthly average relative humidity, monthly average air temperature, then rainfall. So, all the informations we need, sometimes we need to do some kind of calculation as per the requirement of the designer. So, when we are talking about design of system, we need to follow some kind of standards. So, without standards we cannot suggest what kind of devices to be used for a particular power plant. So, different country uses different standards and uh, in Indian context we have different standards like 
for solar PV modules IEC 61215 or IS14286 is used and this IEC stands for International Electrotechnical Commission and IS is Indian standard. Okay? So, this is design qualifications and type of approval for crystalline silicon terrestrial PV module. Okay? For inverter IEC 621091 and IEC 621092. So, these two kind we can use for cables BSEN 50618 BS stand for British standard and EN is European standard. So, both the standards are here for cables we follow these standards. Connectors we have appropriate standards, then array box, protection box, module mounting structure, lightning arrester, then weather monitoring system, scatter system, then fuses. So, all standards are there. So, appropriate standards need to be used for a PV system. So, when we are talking about designing grid connected PV system, we design based on energy balance paradigm. So, what is energy balance paradigm? It is like the generated energy in the PV side has to be equal to the consumed energy at the load side during one year. So, mathematically we can write something like the energy yield at the DC side is EDC, Y stands for yearly, this is the total area integration of ZMT is nothing but solar radiation component multiplied by efficiency of the module and dt because it is for one year. So, now this am is again related to the individual module area. So, it is something like uh, total area is number of module multiplied by the area of a single module okay. and required energy balance will be something like EDC yearly is equal to ELY this is the load this is SF. SF is the sizing factor usually its value is 1.1. So, EDC is about 1.1 times more than ELY right that has to be kept while designing. Now, the required number of modules can also be calculated as we know the A total is area of the module multiplied by n. So, we can find out what is the number of modules required and we can also need to know like how this modules to be connected in series and parallel. So, suppose if we get based on the calculation say n t is 11 panels. So, how to do the connections? So, it can be taken as 12 instead of 11 and we can configure it something like 12 is to 1, 6 is to 2, 4 multiplied by 3, 3 multiplied by 4, 2 by 6 and 1 into 12 string. That means, we need to check the voltage and accordingly we can see like how many modules to be connected in series and how many modules are to be connected in parallel, but combination should be something like this. So, power on the DC side we can calculate something like PDC under stacy condition is equal to total number of module multiplied by PMPP this is power at the maximum power point under stacy condition. So, this is the relationship between the power under standard test condition and MPPT. So, this correlation tells the relationship between this power produced and then this MPPT power and we must know 
this power DC power that is input to the inverter and this is the maximum DC power of the inverter has to be greater than P DC under S T C. This should be keep in mind. Further, the nominal DC power of the inverter should be approximately equal to the P V power at S T C. That is how we can write it. Okay. In practice, the nominal DC power of the inverter is selected slightly below the PV power at standard test condition up to 10 percent. And depending on the climatic zone because of the different irradiation distributions. Okay. Also for this value like nominal DC power of the inverter, if it is less than 5 kilowatt then single phase inverter are used. If this value is more than 5 kilowatt peak then three phase inverter is suggested. Now, let us have a look about the important components like inverter and module. So, first table is for module, it is a 300 watt peak solar module, manufacturer is Tata power solar. So, it is a 300 watt peak is the power output and you can see the module efficiency then voltage at maximum power, current at maximum power open circuit voltage, short circuit current and tolerances. Also temperature coefficient characteristics like NOCT is 47 and you can see here temperature coefficient of power VOC and then ISC. So, these are the temperature coefficient, these values are required while calculating the variables required for designing. And uh, this is inverter specifications, manufacturer is Bonfiglioli and DC power input to the inverter is 280 kilowatt and DC voltage is 900 volt and maximum DC current is 600 ampere and MPPT voltage range is 425 to 975 volt and output data is something like maximum AC power is 250 and then range then we can have maximum AC current then efficiency is 98.3 it is quite efficient. So, if we design say 1 megawatt plant then how many inverter such kind of inverters are required it is 250 multiplied by 4. So, 4 such kind of inverters are required to meet 1 megawatt of power just then example. Now, we will be learning how this critical matching is done for design of the PV system. So, first thing matching of inverter and array. So, it is important to find out the most appropriate combination of module and inverters by considering the local operating conditions. The voltage, current and power rating of module and inverter are the three criteria which ensures the proper matching of the system in terms of performance and safety. So, what are different important steps? Number of modules in the string, how many modules will be there in a string and maximum number of string, how many such kind of string will be there and then matching the power rating. So, these are very important aspects while designing. So, now let us learn how this matching of inverters and errors are done. First, number of modules in a string. So, first attempt is to determine the lower and upper limit of a string. That means, the minimum and maximum number of modules that can be connected in series. Okay. And for this, we also need to know the maximum and minimum operating temperatures and maximum and minimum effective voltage of the module. So, how to calculate this maximum and minimum operating temperature? 
if we know the ambient temperature then annulosity of the PV module and incident solar radiation at the location of the module, we can find out the operating temperature. So, it is something like T operating is T m B n plus N O C T minus 20 divided by 800 into G. So, G is solar intensity. So, we are saying here maximum and minimum operating temperature. This is the general form to find out the operating temperature of the module. So, in order to find out the maximum and minimum, what we can do? We can find out the highest recorded temperature and lowest recorded temperature of a particular location. That means, the highest ambient temperature, highest and lowest ambient temperature. So, by using this we can find out here. So, we can change these values by considering this ambient temperature then we can find out the operating temperature at these two condition like minimum and maximum operating temperature. right? So, once we are done with this maximum and minimum operating temperature then we can go for maximum and minimum effective voltage of the module. So, how we can calculate it? We can use this expression to find out this minimum effective voltage and maximum effective voltage. So, as I shown before the specifications of the module from that we need to find out what is the MP voltage maximum power point voltage under standard test condition and this this temperature coefficients for power and maximum operating temperature and temperature under standard test condition. So, once we have this value we can find out minimum effective voltage of the PV array and also if we know this value and this POC gamma this temperature coefficient for open circuit voltage and minimum temperature and temperature under standard test condition we can find out maximum effective voltage of PV array. So, it may be noted that it is very important to keep in mind that the output voltage of the array should not fall outside the inverter MBBT voltage range. This is important. Now, how many modules are to be connected in a string? For this the minimum number of modules in a string can be calculated by using this expression. So, here we will go for minimum number of strings that means, minimum number of modules in a string and maximum number of modules in a strings that we will find out. So, for minimum number of modules in a string we need this two value input voltage of the inverter this minimum and then minimum effective voltage which was calculated. So, again we can note that there is a voltage drop which occurs when the generated electricity flows from array to the inverter. Therefore, during the calculation of lower limit a 2 percent voltage drop needs to be considered for B minimum effective and a safety margin of 10 percent should be considered for inverter voltage which is DC voltage minimum. Okay? In case of maximum number of modules in a string we can use this expression here we need to use the voltage of the inverter which is maximum because there is a range minimum and maximum. So, maximum we need to pick for this calculation and maximum effective voltage. We may note that for calculation of V max effective open circuit voltage is considered since there is no voltage drop, but for calculation of voltage that is inverter DC voltage maximum 5 percent safety margin is applied. Okay? Now, once we know the minimum and 
maximum number of modules in the string, then we can go for maximum the inverter. So, current rating of the module has to be matched with the inverter input current rating in order to determine the maximum possible strings to be connected in parallel with the inverter. And due to the variation in operating temperature, the value of short circuit current of the module also differ from its standard test condition value. And this can be calculated by using this expression, ISC effective is something like this. And maximum number of string to be connected in parallel can be determined by using this expression. Once we know these values, then we can find out what is S max. And these coefficients are already known, gamma S is short circuit temperature coefficient, gamma P is maximum power temperature coefficient, then gamma VOC is open circuit voltage temperature coefficient. So, we need to match the best combination of string and array to get the maximum DC power output. This is very, very important. The maximum DC power output of the PV array should be always less than or equal to the input power of the inverter. So, we can give an example. Suppose, the rating of the inverter is 280 kilowatt, then we have to design these two in such a way that each multiplication is close to 280. It cannot exceed it and if it is far from 280, that is also not good because it involves lot of losses if we do something like that. So, if we consider minimum number of string is 16 and then number of strings per array is 58 or maybe 59 or maybe 57, then we can see what result we get in terms of power output. It may be 283.2, 278.4, 273.6, which one is very close to 280? Of course, 278.4 and that is why you can consider this value. For the second case like the maximum number of modules in a string is 17 and the number of strings per array, if we vary from 55, 54 and 53, then you can see the power output, it is 280.5, 275.4, then 270.30, right. So, which one is very close to 280? It is this one, but this is more than 280. So, this is not to be considered, right. So, what you can go for? What combination is appropriate? For this case, it is this combination, if number of module is 16 in a string and number of string is 58, then what you will get is 278.4, which is close to 280 kilowatt. So, that is how we need to match the inverter. Okay. So, now let us solve a problem. The problem goes something like this. A solar power plant is to be installed to meet the electricity demand of 1.5 megawatt at a solar insulation of 800 watt per meter square. Manufacturers output tolerance derating due to the dirt, derating due to temperature of a PV module are 5 percent, 5 percent and 0.5 percent per degree increase in temperature respectively. DC cable loss inverter efficiency and AC cable losses are given as 3, 98.3, 1 percent respectively. The inverter has a maximum voltage input of 900 volt which is given here and maximum DC current input is 600 ampere. The detailed specifications are given in both the tables for modules and inverter. The minimum temperature, maximum temperature and solar peak hours of the sites are 5, 38 and 5 hours. We need to find out the 
total number of modules required for the plant. Also, we need to estimate the DC output of the array. So, specifications of the modules are given here. So, 300 watt peak is the output power and voltage at maximum power point is 36.6, open circuit voltage is 44.8, short circuit current is 8.71 and NOCT is 47 and these are the temperature coefficients. So, input DC power which is coming from the array will be 280 kilowatt okay? and uh, this is the output power. So, this information should be requiring while solving this problem. So, let us draw this schematically so that it gives you better understanding. This is PV array, PV array and we have DC cable, we have inverter here. then it goes to grid and this is AC cable okay. and then finally, what we want 1.5 megawatt of power and sun is here, solar radiation is falling and this intensity is 800 watt per meter square. Okay. So, now what we need to find out is T operating temperature. Okay. Operating temperature, we know the expression T ambient plus NOCT nominal operating cell temperature minus 20 divided by I or sometimes we can write Z as well, this may be I. Okay. So, here this is 800, both are 800. So, it will be like it is like 800 and this is 800. So, both are same. So, it will be 28 plus NOCT is 47 minus 20. So, it will be 55 degree C operating temperature of the module. Right? Now, let us find out the derated PV output. P P V derated which is equal to P S T C multiplied by derated term for temperature multiplied by DART multiplied by manufacturing tolerances. So, here is the 300 multiplied by we have 0.85 multiplied by we have 0.95 multiplied by 0.95. So, this will be like 191.78 watt. So, this you must know how this can be calculated then we can calculate T that means operating temperature at maximum or maximum operating temperature which is nothing but 38 plus 47 minus 20 which is equal to 65 degree C and minimum operating temperature will be 5 plus 47 minus 20. So, 
So, this will be 32 degree C. Now, we will find out what is a 50th minimum voltage, which is something like PMPP STC minus gamma P T operating minus T S T C. This is max. So, once you substitute those values from the data, what you will get is 36.43 volt. Similarly, we can find out P max effective. So, each value will be 44.779 volt. Okay. So, once we are done with this, we can find out what is minimum and maximum number of strings strings which is nothing but V in D C minimum to the V minimum effective. So, we know the values 425 and then 36.43. So, it is about 11.67 and is equivalent to 12. So, minimum number of modules in a string is 12 and maximum will be the maximum voltage is 975 to the maximum voltage what we have already got maximum effective voltage is 44.779. So, it will be something like 21.77 which is equal to approximately 22. Right? So, once we are done with this then what we can calculate is the ISC effective. Which is nothing but ISC STC minus gamma ISC multiplied by TOP max minus T STC. So, if you substitute the values it is 8.71 minus this value is 0 0.0442 divided by 100 multiplied by 65 is the maximum operating temperature as this is 25. So, it is found to be 8.9 8.69. So, it is effective. Now, what you can find out is the maximum number of string to be connected in parallel. Maximum number of string to be connected in parallel and this can be calculated by using the expression S max is I inverter D C to the I S C effective. Okay. So, this value like 600 divided by 8.69 and this is found to be 69 approximately 69. Okay. So, this is 
the maximum number of strings to be connected in parallel right so we can now find out the best combination here what are the different possible arrangements of the module array so combination 1 2 3 4 that way we can go and then number of modules per string as i said minimum is 12 and maximum is 22 and number of strings per array is 69 okay so that way we can find out the best combination so one is the STC power output which is 300 watt peak and the other one is when it is derated okay so once we do the calculation so this is the STC power output which is 300 watt peak and if we do this combination 14 into 66 it is found to be 277.2 right and if we try with other combinations we can see it is more than the rated and this combination is also fine like 288 yeah so we can go for this or we can find out the best combinations so in our calculation so if it is 300 then we can go for 16 multiplied by 60 then what we will get 288 which is close to the STC power output of the inverter and if we consider the derated power so derated power in this case is 230 so if we go back so this this is actually 230 this is a pickle mistake it should be 230.13 okay approximately we can like 230 what right so if we consider this derated power then what we can do we can consider different combinations like number of modules in a string and number of strings then what we get is something like this value is 280 so now let us see the possible arrangements of the module array so here as you can see minimum and maximum number of modules in a string is 12 and 22 we can try with different combinations okay so best combination will be one which is very close to the rated output or rated input of the inverter so input of the inverter is 280 watt so we need to find out what combination is best like uh, 12 into 69 it is 248 is very less compared to 280 then 1466 it is very close to 280 and 1680 is 288 it is more than 280 so we will go for this combination and also we can go for derated power output which is 280 so if we consider this derated power output and which combination is best that also you can see so combination 14 which is nothing but number of modules 19 and number of strings is 64 and this will give 279.68 so we will go for this combination okay so that way we can find out the best combination and then if we do the calculation with this then we can come up with a solution that the number of modules required to meet this 1.5 megawatt will be 6953 this is the number of modules required and we can see like areas required will be something like 16635.52 meter square and 19 modules in one string and total number of string will be 
total number of string will be 64. So, that way it will continue because we need 6 inverters because output is 250 and then if we multiply with 6 then it will be 1500. Okay? So, that is 1.5 megawatt. So, that way we will have 6 configurations. Okay? And uh, we need number of Arrays per in inverter is 64 and uh, number of modules required required will be 6953. Okay. So, we can summarize what we have done today. Initially, we have introduced the concept of grid connected PV systems and what are different components and how it works. And then we have done stepwise design of a grid connected PV system. And finally, we have considered a problem how to design 1.5 megawatt solar grid connected PV system. And also, we have discussed what are different inverters are there, how these inverters are sized. Okay? I hope you got an overall idea of designing a solar grid connected PV system. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.